Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lindsay and we are here doing our final plan with me for the year of 23. Everyone says the year has gone by so fast and thinking back it did, but then some moments it just felt like it was pulling teeth. But nonetheless, this month did creep up on me because I had just so much things to do in my personal life right now. I'm actually recording this in a rental car because I am away and if you hear dogs and stuff in the background, I apologize where I'm at. It's very um, more towards like suburban country area. So you'll hear a couple of like dogs barking and maybe like a rooster or two. But for my plan with me, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I definitely didn't want to do anything super Christmassy. I just feel like that is very, I don't know, in my opinion, almost a little cheesy, maybe a tacky. So I wanted to still incorporate the festivities of the holiday season. So pretty much if you're like, Lindsay, what is your theme? Well, I'll tell you. My theme is more of like a cottage core nighttime twinkling lights type of thing. And the reason why is because I still wanted to incorporate lights. I really do like Christmas lights in any rendition because it's just like, I don't know, reminds me of like Hallmark movies where everybody goes crazy putting lights up on their houses. So I wanted to do that, but I never really had a proper theme that had to do with mushrooms. I love drawing mushrooms and it's a shame that I didn't really get to do that this year as a full on theme. So I wanted to incorporate it in my theme for this month by making it more of like a Thumbelina rendition. Basically taking like inanimate objects such as like a teapot and making it into more of a different concept of a product. So pretty much teapot house who lives in such a small little house, little critters, hence cottagecore. And it was actually not hard, but in terms of thinking of a theme with an aesthetic, aesthetic, it's hard because there isn't anything that's really defined. There isn't really anything that just has natural, I guess, motifs. So you kind of have to think beyond the spectrum into what really fits within this aesthetic that you're trying to do for a theme. So. I kind of just kept it very simple. I didn't know if I wanted to color everything, but I ended up not doing it. I just the simple like coloring the shadows, giving a little pop of color just so it's there, but it's not like I'm doing an entire coloring book type of thing, but I felt like it was too plain. So I don't know, ever since October, I've been really, really liking incorporating like a harsh dark black background it just makes everything pop and it was just the one thing this theme really needed because I don't know there was just something about it that kind of lacked for me and I didn't want to do anything with scrapbooking just because I was really running behind on basically recording so I needed to do something that just required to me basic stationery such as markers pens and gel pens so I I tried to keep it as neutral as possible with my stationery, but surprisingly, I was still recording my filming the day that I had to leave. Now that day, because I left on Tuesday the 28th, on Monday the 27th, I actually had to do like packing in the morning. I had to clean my house before I left because I just don't like leaving a dirty house um, or what I deemed as dirty because it was perfectly fine by my boyfriend's standards, but no, I can't leave it dirty. So I did that. I finished my recording and then I had to get ready for work and then I had to, you know, get all that jazz going. So I was definitely pressed for time. That's why I just kept it more on a simple doodle type of thing versus incorporating all this ephemera, all this, you know, scrapbooking, junk journal type of anything. So kind of, you know, going by my rant of my lack of time in my time management, 
Um, I decided to make the calendar a little bit bigger this month just because I didn't know if I was going to have a lot of things to do besides working. So I wanted to have enough space, but also the one calendar was okay. It's just that I would have winter break from my classes, so I wouldn't really need all that planning space in terms of like things to get done when I can just have a smaller area and have a little bit more space in the calendar itself just to kind of remind me of when projects are due. But again, I still wanted to incorporate it. I still wanted to incorporate such a harsh black in my design. So I used it very minimally, but I love the combination of black and brown or like black, brown, and neutrals because something about it is just so aesthetically pleasing to me. It's definitely something that I incorporate even down to my wardrobe. I love wearing basics and I love wearing earth tones, neutral tones, just because it's more timeless and it goes with anything. But I didn't know why I wanted to again try my white gel pen. Um, it wasn't working and I couldn't find my white acrylic pen. So I actually opted for my gold pen and oddly enough they're both the same brand. But my gold pen works fabulously but my white gel pen just doesn't. And is this something that you guys kind of struggle with or is it that I just got like a bad batch because sometimes that happens. But I actually did like the gel gold pen with the entire look because I don't know it gives it a little bit of pop almost like a little bit of a Christmassy elegance to it without it being so blatantly Christmas and yeah I just really liked the fact that with something that was so unintentional and just trying to fix a mistake ended up being a blessing in disguise because I really did love it and I really did love how it just kind of gave a bit more to such a very minimal theme and minimal color palette. The different type of markers I ended up using for this layout were a combination of my Tombow markers, my Zebra Mild Liners, and also my Crayola markers from the Around the World collection. And I just use um, like my normal Tombow Furunosuke like brush pen for like the doodlings and then this I don't know the name of it but it's like this really inky soft tip like brush pen that the ink actually allows you to like write with white gel pen so it just doesn't bleed everywhere so those were the type of materials that I did end up using but because I didn't take a list of what I used it's pretty much everything that I have to like remember off the top of my head so for example like the washi tape I ended up using was also a combination of Leela journals and I want to say notebook therapies like the cottage core washi tape set I specifically used the green one and the tannish wide roll one but primarily it was more from Lula journals just because now she started coming out with washi tape which I have such a soft spot for but also because paper minty studio has always been like my tried and true when it comes to washi tape but because fulfilling a small business because she does it all on her own it takes a lot out of her and so she had to kind of step back and figure out a way where she can kind of have like a good work balance because you know that's important but she ended up doing like not mystery boxes but like monthly kits so she only would carry washi tape for that specific monthly journal kit and that's not good for someone like me that just loves to spend all her money on washi tape. So I've been trying to find different people that have different styles because I'm extremely picky when it comes to my washi tape. 
but I really do enjoy Lula's because she definitely still keeps it more for her aesthetic which is very soft delicate almost like victorian retro vibe but with a very very muted cool tone color palette which i never thought i would like but i really loved how it just works with my theme it still again plays on the cottage core aspect of incorporating like nature animals um farm life i would say and then the aspects of delicacy of like flowers patterns embroidery it's like the best of both worlds but pretty much to fill the bottom of my page i ended up creating a little mouse and i just think he's like super cute if you don't know what's on top of his head i'm sorry i'm not the best when it comes to like drawing things that i don't usually draw but i try drawing like one of those like thumb thumb things that you put on your thumb to protect yourself from sewing um i want to say it's not a thumb tack but i you know what i mean you definitely know what i mean so i ended up putting it on his head almost on a sense of like he's trying to be whimsical funny balance it and give him a little bit more personality because that's the whole point of this theme is to be whimsical festive and just to have fun now with my playlist i'll be honest both my playlist and my habit tracker i just kept the same i was trying really hard to figure out how i could change it but because i was so pressed for time i just stuck with what i knew worked best and i just kind of created like small little headers on each one of them and wanted to incorporate a lot more of the black and neutral aesthetic for the color palette so for my playlist, I ended up doing the header a little bit more intricate with doodles because I didn't have time to print out the cover albums of the songs that I've been really into, The Smiths. So I never knew that they existed because on a car ride to my grandma's house for Thanksgiving, my brother played it and they were just like so, I don't know, so catchy, so boppy that I was like, huh. I need to check them out so I ended up listening to majority of their songs and the two that I really liked the most were Charming Man and Heaven Knows I'm Miserable Now and listen if you guys are in your sad boy or sad girl era listen to them because it is worth it and I just love it so I'm just so upset that I wasn't able to print out the cover albums because I really wanted it in my journal but ultimately, I just stuck with what I could because of time and I just made the boxes be blacked out because the cover albums were going to be the things that had the most color. And then I was going to actually write the song name in the artist along with actually the play buttons all in like that gold gel pen because it just gave it more of the pop that it was missing. And with the habit tracker, this is where I really was like stressing because I just didn't have the time to think of something more elaborate than what I knew worked best. So I ended up just doing the typical header and again some doodles that I just thought fit with my theme. And because I was just stressing and couldn't think of anything else besides things that you were already like incorporated like mushrooms stars teapots things like that i ended up just using them again because they still represent the theme and surprisingly the teapot that you see is actually a little doodle that i did back in my january plan with me for the year so it's almost like coming back to full circle and i'm just gonna kind of go off on a side tangent I thought about this as I'm saying it, how cool is it when things come back in a full circle just like the ending of Attack on Titan? I know, I know, if you've yet to watch it, yet to finish it, I'm not going to spoil anything besides that, but if you've watched the anime and read the manga, or both, then you know, you know that there is a big division amongst the Attack on Titan fandom and if you want to know where I lie because the thing is I watch snippets of the actual anime here and there 
but I kind of just stopped with season two because that's all there was at the time and of course like the internet spoiled everything for me but if you want to know my stance I'm definitely like on the side of being kind of satisfied with the ending I definitely loved the creator um, I'm not gonna butcher his last name but I give him so much credit he thought beyond everyone's like intellectual level of trying to basically deliver a message through storytelling and I just love the different aspects and even if you've been on like Instagram and TikTok everybody has been making videos of like lore videos of like other forms of symbolism and making it be bigger than what it is maybe I'm wrong maybe it is bigger but just know that things coming back in full circle is just like chef kiss it's hilarious so when i noticed that i accidentally did this same doodle i was like oh let's just make it a full circle thing because apparently that is a trend right now hence attack on titan because the last episode aired what like november 4th or 3rd and people are still talking about it till this day and it's been almost a whole month and it's like insane it's to the point that the creator is actually creating like a side little novel that's going to be released in april just to satisfy the other half like it's hilarious but yeah thank you for my ted talk <laughs> of attack on titan but let's get back to my actual bullet journal so i ended up doing the same uh layout for my habit trackers and i didn't want to incorporate too much black because there was already so much on the other side with my playlist so I ended up doing more of like a neutral grid and then creating more of a harsh backdrop. I usually don't do it just because of how harsh it can be. And I usually opt for more of a subtle approach, more of like a gray. But because black is so prevalent in my theme, I just had to do it and it gave, it gave what it needed, which I really loved. The only thing that I really struggle from time to time is how soft the tip is. So you really have to be careful with how much pressure you apply because if not, girl, your lines are going to be wonky because my lines were definitely wonky and I had to fix a, a bit of it off camera. But yeah, I really love it. It's just I wish it was a little bit more stiffer of the tip, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. Now for the weekly spread. So I was really contemplating whether I was going to have a weekly spread in my setup or not just because of time constraints, but basically I was like, no, I gotta do it because if not, it's just gonna ruin how I personally plan my weeks, especially starting a new month. So I ended up incorporating it and I ended up keeping it super, super simple nothing fancy with dutch doors or crazy doodles nothing like that i usually do this type of layout when i'm doing more of like a week two or a week three where it doesn't have to be so intricate but basically time said no and this is what i had to do so i ended up just creating the weeks on like the days of the week on the side and make the middle more of a focal point now, because I just could not be bothered to think of something for the middle, I just ended up redoing the actual cover like doodle in the first weekly spread. So I just very hab, what is it, haphazardly uh, just doodled. I quickly went through with a pencil sketch and then I just like didn't think about it and went in with pen. So it's not as great as the original. But honestly, I like them both either way just because they both serve their own purposes. One, because the cover is supposed to be more, I don't know, to me, a bit more intricate. And then for my weekly, it should be a lot more bigger in terms of like scaling. Because for this particular layout, I'm kind of sufficing it for two, two pages. And so... I just kind of did the same thing. I ended up doing the teapot house with the, I guess, like festive lights and still keeping everything literally exactly the same. 
So if you guys feel like it might be a little bit too boring, you could kind of change it for like a doodle of mushrooms and maybe like a frog on top of it or maybe continuing on with like other critters or maybe like a squirrel. Now I'm not the best at drawing squirrels and I don't think I've ever have tried to but I would say just keep it to something you feel comfortable with. You can even do like a brown mushroom with like a snail on top of it or almost like a, caterpill a caterpillar type of rendition almost like a, a homage to like Alice in Wonderland with like the smoking caterpillar you could do something like that anything that gives that very whimsical approach to the theme do it I give you the green light for it so yeah I kept everything the same and I just made sure to try to keep it as close to the original as possible because I was working with so many different tones of brown. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of forgot where certain browns went and so it's not gonna look exactly to the T, but you know, it still serves us what, we're, what we were wanting. We wanted cottage core, we were wanting small miniature teapot houses, we were wanting all the feels and that's what it kind of gave and I'm happy about it. So the only difference I would say that I did between the cover page and this is that I actually had the black background take up a lot more of the actual doodle itself and I didn't incorporate too many stars just because I needed some space to practically you know, write down what I need to get done in my days. So the only main difference is that in the middle, instead of writing the word home, I kind of needed to incorporate it, the title of the month some way, somehow. And I just felt like it was already, I wouldn't say cluttered, but it was just filled in proportionately. And if I was going to add anything more intricate, I just felt like it would have been too squished, too muddy, and too just... I don't know, claustrophobic, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, so I just ended up making the little wooden sign kind of be the title of the month, so I just shortened it into December with D-E-C, and yeah, nothing like too fancy. I wish I had more time to implement smaller little doodles, maybe around the headers for the days of the week, maybe like little small stars small little bits of leaves or even like these little weird like marigold looking flowers that I was doing here and there that could have been really awesome too but I was just more thankful I was able to have something in the middle of the page and I know that it gets weird when you get towards the back of your notebook because you have most of your pages stacked on the left side versus the right so it doesn't make the overall picture look as symmetric as it should but you know you you kind of have to work with what you got i mean you guys didn't even know that underneath the right side of my notebook i had to put washi tape because it was so like obviously unbalanced that it was making it hard for me to actually write on the page without the page actually crumpling over itself so i ended up just putting like maybe two or three washi tapes to keep the level the same but yeah and here's a final flip through for the year and that's crazy because 2024 is literally right around the corner but if anything, I hope you guys are looking forward to my January plan with me because that actually might be next. But nonetheless, I hope you guys have a fantastic year. And until next time, bye! <laughs>